Welcome to the Soccer Tavern, where we're discussing the history, culture, and philosophy of the beautiful game. My name is Dave, and in this video, we're talking about the history of Fußball Club Bayern München AV, better known as Bayern Munich. Pull up a seat, and let's start the discussion. Bayern Munich is located in the northern part of the city of Munich. Munich is located in the southeastern part of Germany. The club currently play in the Bundesliga, and its home ground is called the Allianz Arena. The stadium opened in 2005 and holds about 75,000 people. On February 27, 1900, a group of men stormed out of a meeting for the MTV München 1879 Sports Club. There was a dispute between existing members over the sport of soccer's future at that club. The group of men who stormed out of the meeting then met at the Giesel restaurant in Munich that night and formed Fußball Club Bayern München, or FC Bayern Munich in English. Bayern is the German word for Bavaria, the region where the city of Munich is located. The leader of this rebel group was named Franz Jan, and he was elected Bayern's first ever president. In 1906, the club merged with Münchener Sports Club and adopted the colors of red and white that is still in use by the club today. There would be a few other mergers and splits of the club, but the core of what we know as Bayern Munich was formed and solidified in 1900 and 1906. The club has many nicknames. The first two of FCB and Bayern come from the club's name. FCB is simply the acronym of Fußball Club Bayern, and Bayern obviously is a word from the club's name. Another nickname used for the club is Die Roten, which means the Reds in English. It comes from the club's primary kick color. Bayern has two more nicknames with a bit more complexity. The first is FC Hollywood. In the 1990s, Bayern players had a reputation for lacking discipline, and the club experienced a lot of internal problems. Stories were then leaked to the press, who dubbed the team FC Hollywood. The nickname will still sometimes be used for the club today. And Bayern's final nickname is Stern des Sudens, or Stars of the South in English. The club is located in southern Germany and is the most successful team in German soccer's history. Also, the club's official anthem is Stern des Sudens. The song is played before home matches. I'm not sure if the anthem came first or if the nickname came first, so if you have more info about that, please let us know in the comment section below the video, but Stern des Sudens is also a nickname used for the club. Bayern's crest has more or less been the same since 1970 with only minor design tweaks. It is a relatively simple design with the club's name around the outside of the circle and a portion of the Bavarian flag in the middle. The flag of Bavaria is light blue and white with a diamond pattern design. The colors and design come from the coat of arms of the Wittelsbach family. The Wittelsbach family ruled Bavaria from the 13th century into the 20th century and is deeply ingrained in the history of Bavaria. Obviously, a successful club like Bayern Munich is going to have many important dates in the club's history. It was tough to choose, but I selected four of them to highlight here. If you have others, please let us know in the comment section below the video. First, on June 12, 1932, Bayern Munich faced Eintracht Frankfurt in the final of the German National Championship in Nuremberg. This was before the Bundesliga was created, so this trophy was recognized as the highest league title in Germany. 55,000 people watched as Bayern Munich won 2-0 to win its first major trophy in the club's history. The club would wait more than 25 years to win its second major title. That came on December 29, 1957. Bayern played for Tuno Dusseldorf in the DFB Pokal final on this date. Again, Bayern did not concede a goal and scored the only goal of the match through Rudi Jops to win 1-0. It was the club's first cup title in its history. The third event I'd like to highlight is a negative event on the surface, but it actually was a huge stroke of luck for the club. On April 28, 1963, 1860 Munich clinched the league title for the Oberliga Süd. The league title meant that 1860 would qualify for the Bundesliga, which was starting later that year. There was a rule that only one team from each city could qualify for the initial Bundesliga, and that meant that even though Bayern Munich had more of a sporting right to be in the Bundesliga based on the previous 10 seasons, 1860 would be an initial member of the Bundesliga with Bayern Munich being relegated to the second division. Because Bayern was relegated to the second division, the club needed to change its financial policy and get rid of a lot of their star players. That change of philosophy allowed the club to play youngsters like Franz Beckenbauer, Sepp Meyer, and Gerd Müller. The drop-down in division also allowed the club to restructure as a professional club and establish an infrastructure that set the club up for long-term success. Who knows what would have happened to those players and the club if Bayern was an inaugural member of the Bundesliga in 1963. 
Many other important events happened in the club's history, but I want to flash forward to June 1st, 2013. On this date, Bayern beat VfB Stuttgart in the final of the DFB Pokal to win their 16th Pokal title. The reason that this title was so special is that Bayern had already won the Bundesliga title and beaten Borussia Dortmund in the final of the UEFA Champions League that season. By winning the domestic cup title as well, Bayern became the 7th European club and first ever German club to win a treble. A treble is when a club wins its domestic league, domestic cup, and Champions League in the same season. It was a historic moment for a historic club. Also, if you don't know the story, look up Bayern's 2001 Bundesliga title, specifically their last match against Hamburg on May 19, 2001. Mia San Mia is FC Bayern's club motto. It is the Bavarian translation of Wir sind Wir in German and translates to English as We Are Who We Are. It is a saying of regional pride for the Bavarian state of Germany, and the phrase has roots that began in the 19th century Austro-Hungarian Empire. The phrase, as it applies to Bayern, became popular during the club's run to the 1987 European Cup Final, now known as the Champions League. Hans Flügler, Hansi Dürfner, and Ludwig Kergel incorporated Mia San Mia into their post-match songs, usually while standing on a table or bar. The phrase has become synonymous with FC Bayern, and in 2010, the club released a set of 16 principles based on the Mia San Mia philosophy. Many amazing players have played for Bayern over the years. I'm only going to highlight six of them here with a focus on players from at least 10 years ago, but if you have other players, please let us know in the comment section below the video. Sepp Meyer is one of the best goalkeepers in history. He played at Bayern from 1958 until a car accident ended his career in 1979. He made 473 Bundesliga appearances, including 422 consecutive matches, won four Bundesliga titles, four DFB Pokals, three European Cups, now known as the Champions League, and one European Cup Winners Cup, all with Bayern. He also won a World Cup and a European Championship with West Germany. Franz Beckenbauer was a teammate of Meyer. Nicknamed Der Kaiser, he won all the same major trophies as Meyer, 14 in total for club and country. Beckenbauer would make just under 400 Bundesliga appearances for Bayern before leaving to finish his career in the United States. He was named German Footballer of the Year on four different occasions and is a legend of the game. The next player I'd like to highlight is Gerd Müller. He was a teammate of Meyer and Beckenbauer. Müller is one of the most lethal goal scorers in soccer's history. He has the single-season Bundesliga scoring record of 40 goals, as well as career Bundesliga scoring record of 365 goals. No one has really come close to breaking either of those records. Müller also won the same number of trophies, 14, as Meyer and Beckenbauer, and internationally, he scored a ridiculous 68 goals in only 62 games for West Germany. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge joined Bayern at 18 years old in 1974 in the middle of the Meyer, Beckenbauer, and Müller years. Rummenigge finished his career as the second highest scorer in the club's history, and he still holds that recognition, though current attackers Robert Lewandowski and Thomas Müller are somewhat close to passing him on the scoring charts. Rummenigge won seven major trophies with Bayern, collected three individual awards, and was Bundesliga top scorer on three different occasions. He also won a European championship with West Germany in 1980. Lothar Matthaus isn't quite a Bayern legend the way the other players mentioned so far were because he was already an established star before joining Bayern, and he actually left the club during his peak. Still, Matthaus is one of the most decorated soccer players in German soccer history. He won seven Bundesliga titles, three DFB Pokals, and the UEFA Cup, now known as the Europa League, with Bayern. He also won the Euros in 1980 with West Germany and captained the country to the World Cup in 1990. Matthaus is the only German to win the World Player of the Year award, which he won in 1991, and he is one of only three players to appear in five different World Cups. The sixth and final player I'd like to highlight is Oliver Kahn. Kahn joined Bayern in 1994, and his 14 years with the club, he won a record eight Bundesliga titles, a record six DFB Pokals, the Champions League once, and the UEFA Cup, now known as the Europa League once. Kahn was a three-time World Goalkeeper of the Year, and along with Sepp Meyer, he is considered one of the best goalkeepers in soccer's history. I want to highlight four managers here. Udo Ladic is the most successful Bundesliga manager of all time. He won six Bundesliga titles with Bayern Munich in two separate stints and two titles with Borussia Mönchengladbach. His eight titles are still a Bundesliga record for a manager. Ladek led Bayern in the early to mid-1970s as the club became a German powerhouse and won its first European Cup, now known as the Champions League. Ladek managed mainly in Germany but had a stint at FC Barcelona where he won the European Cup Winners' Cup. He was the first and only manager to win the three major European Cups, each with a different club. 
In 2000, the Cup Winners' Cup was eliminated, so Ladek will be the only manager in history to hold this record. He is one of the greatest German managers in history and won 15 major titles, the majority of which came at Bayern. Jop Hankes is another one of the greatest German managers in history. He began his managerial career with Borussia Mönchengladbach in 1979. He couldn't win any trophies in his eight years as a manager with that club, so it was slightly surprising when Bayern appointed him manager in 1987. In his first of four different stints with the club, he won two Bundesliga titles. Hankes would move on to manage many other clubs in Spain, Germany, and Portugal before returning to Bayern for a brief period in 2009. His time at Bayern from 2011 to 2013, though, is when he sealed legendary status as he won a treble in the 2012-2013 season. As we already said, a treble is when a club wins the domestic league, domestic cup, and Champions League in the same season. He is the only German manager in history to accomplish that feat. The next manager I'd like to highlight is Otmar Hitzfeld. Before joining Bayern Munich in 1998, Hitzfeld won two Bundesliga titles and a Champions League with Bayern rivals Borussia Dortmund. He was also named World Coach of the Year in 1997. Upon arriving at Bayern, Hitzfeld quickly won many trophies. By the time he left Bayern for the second time in June of 2008, he had won five Bundesliga titles, three DFB Pokals, and a Champions League all with Bayern. And the final manager I'd like to discuss here is Pep Guardiola. Pep only managed Bayern Munich for three seasons from 2013 to 2016, but he was very successful. He won the Bundesliga title every one of those seasons and won the DFB Pokal two out of the three seasons. Unfortunately, he couldn't lead Bayern to the Champions League title as his Bayern sides were eliminated in the semifinals of that tournament in all three years. Still, Guardiola is widely considered the greatest active manager in the world and has had massive success in Spain and England in addition to his success in Germany. At only 48 years old, he's already won 17 major titles and is on track to be one of the most decorated managers in the world. As Bayern is the largest and most successful German club in history, it has many rivals. I'm only going to highlight three of them here. Bayern's city rival is 1860 Munich with matches between the teams called Munich Derbys or München Derbys. They stretch all the way back to first meeting in 1902. It may be tough to believe since 1860 has slid so far down the German soccer pyramid, but 1860 was actually the bigger and more successful club in the early days of the Bundesliga. 1860 was an inaugural member of the Bundesliga while Bayern had to start in the second division, which we've already discussed. That certainly helped increase the animosity in this already existing rivalry. Since the 1970s, though, Bayern has been the dominant side in this matchup. Whenever the two sides do meet, though, it is an intense rivalry match for players and supporters. Bayern's main historical rival is FC Nuremberg. Though the two cities are currently in Bavaria, the cities of Munich and Nuremberg historically represented different regions in Germany. Old Bavaria and Franconia, respectively. As such, this rivalry is either called the Bayerische Derby, meaning the Bayern Derby, or the Frankish Bayerische Derby, or the Franconian Bavarian Derby. The two clubs have played more than 180 times, and Nuremberg was the most successful German side until Bayern knocked them off their throne in 1987. The rivalry has lost a bit of luster over the last two or so decades as Bayern have become the absolute powerhouse that they are, while Nuremberg have fluctuated between the divisions and haven't really challenged for trophies. This is still a major rival for Bayern that is worthy of highlighting. Lastly, Bayern's main current rival is Borussia Dortmund. It is a relatively recent rivalry as Dortmund only became a Bundesliga power in the 1990s. The clubs first met in 1965 and have played over 100 matches with Bayern historically dominating this matchup. The cities are more than 350 miles apart, but as Dortmund has risen to become the usual second best club in the Bundesliga, this rivalry has really grown. The most memorable recent match came in the 2013 Champions League final, which Bayern won 2-1. Matches between these two clubs are called Der Klassiker, which loosely translates as the Classico or the Classic. This rivalry should continue to grow as Dortmund continues to build its case as the second biggest club in Germany. The stats and records we're about to discuss here are as of October 2019, which is when we are recording this video. Bayern have played 55 seasons in the top flight in its history. The club is by far the most decorated German club team. It has 56 major trophies, including 28 Bundesliga titles, 19 DFB Pokals or German Cups, 5 UEFA Champions Leagues or European Cups, 1 UEFA Cup now known as the Europa League, one German National Championship before the Bundesliga was created, one UEFA Cup Winners' Cup, and one FIFA Club World Cup. Bayern's record first-team appearance holder is a bit disputed. On the usually reliable website TransferMark, Oliver Kahn is listed with the most first-team appearances at 632. 
I did find some other less reliable sources that listed Seth Meyer as having as many as 700 appearances for the club, but officially, according to Transfer Mark, Meyer only had 631 first-team appearances. I'll let you judge who you view as the club's all-time record appearance holder. The club's record goal scorer is Gerd Muller with 565 first-team goals. That is absolutely ridiculous, and that is not disputed whatsoever. Bayern Munich's record transfer purchase was Lucas Hernandez from Atletico Madrid in Spain on March 27, 2019 for about 80 million euros. The transfer officially processed on July 1, 2019 when the transfer window opened. And the club's record transfer sale was Douglas Costa to Juventus in Italy on July 1, 2018 for about 40 million euros. And one last interesting fact about the club. During World War II, the club's captain, Connie Heidkamp, worked with his wife, Magdalena, to save the club's trophies from air raids on Munich, which began in the summer of 1942. The couple sent the trophies to a farmer in Ashelding, where Magdalena had vacationed as a child. They were safe there until about three years later, when the Americans came closer in the spring of 1945. Americans had a reputation for taking souvenirs, so the Heidkamps buried the boxes on the Ashelding farm. That's how any trophies and memorabilia from before 1945 were saved by the club. So there you have it, a bit of history on Fußball Club Bayern München. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section below the video. Thanks for stopping by the Soccer Tavern. Hope to see you again soon. Prost!